wonderful complex. Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, I'm the master taster of whiskey.com and today we taste the Glen Turret Peat Hits. 40% ABV, not that pricey, below 40. And uh, well, it's one of the very few, if not the only whiskey from the Glen Turret distillery, which is produced with peated malt. Yesterday I had the Glen Turret Sherry Cask matured whiskey and today we have the peated and both carry no age statement and uh, Glen Turret is the oldest working distillery in Scotland founded 1775 and uh, well in former times uh, most of the whiskey was peated because peat was cheaply available in Scotland because all the landscape was covered with mosses and you just had to go out in the mosses and dig your peat, uh, let it dry in the fresh air and then bring it back home for heating. So every cottage was fired by peat and also the barley was dried over peat fire. That was normal because labor was cheap. They worked just for their living and housing. And uh, coal from the south was expensive. It has to be transported into the highlands. And before uh, the railway was built, it was very expensive. So you had to be located uh, at the seashore to have a vessel coming, bringing you the coal. And that was really more expensive than the peat. So the people cut peat and used peat for everything, for heating the stills and drying the barley and everything. So this is the old style and here you see a wonderful peat fire. And I've seen those peat fires uh, in, the, in a restaurant. They had a peat fire in the chimney and it was so hot and the peat burned so fast. It was incredible. And after the fire went out it was really cold again. So. You had to, dug a, had to dug a lot of peat to produce the heat you needed. Um, for this special edition, our master of whiskey has used peated barley. It is believed that this is more akin to how the whiskey would have tasted when the distillery was first registered in 1775. Uh, well, it was registered in the sherry video about the Glenturit Sherry, I said I wondered uh, how they could write the 1775 on their label when uh, whiskey production in the Highlands was legalized uh, not earlier than 1824. Well, that depends on how the, the tax line was defined. Um, today the, uh, the line between Lowlands and Highlands uh, is going from, from Greenock up to Perth or Dundee, I'm not quite sure which of those two towns. And uh, some distilleries are north of the border, some are south, uh, and the Glen Turret is north. But it might be that in 1775 the, uh, the line was defined or the tax was defined in another way because Glen Turret lies very close to the, the, this later tax line. Uh, perhaps Glentoret belonged to the lowlands in former times. No idea. The malted barley would have been dried over peat fires, imparting a heavy smokiness to the new make spirit. The nose gives warm bitumen <laughs> and freshly baked brownie, followed in taste with a sweet smoky flavor with slight salty notes. Salty notes. <laughs> um, salt can't be in a whiskey. Why? Whiskey is distilled and if you distill water, pure H2O is rising and the salt, the, uh, the salt is left behind. The ions are left behind. Um, if you have your warehouse close to the shore, 
there might be some spray coming from the water uh, covering your warehouse, your casks, because the warehouse uh, uh, has big windows, air circulating through, so that it's not fouling inside the warehouse due to the high humidity. So there might be salt coming into the whiskey, but I doubt if the salt is able to, to pass the porous walls of the casks. So salt in a Highland whiskey, far away from the sea. So this is a remembrance of the brain to a salty aroma. There's no salt present, but your brain suggests this could be salt. So your brain is very deep and brings always unexpected results. Oh, fruitiness and pitiness. So there is no strong peat in this whiskey. Otherwise, peat would be everywhere. <sighs> Wonderful complex. Yeah. There's 20 ppm peat. And it's, it lies halfway between the, uh, the phenolic medicinal note and the bonfire dry smoke note. I personally does not distinguish between peat and smoke. I think that's the complete wrong way to describe a whiskey. Because if you have a piece of peat and you smell at it, you smell nothing. If you lick on it, then probably you have a little bit of sourness because of all those acids coming from the rotten plants. And if you burn peat, you either receive a medicinal phenolic note or you receive a bonfire dry note. There is no difference between peatiness and smokiness. Smokiness is the top description and this smokiness comes from the burning of peat. So you can say you have a peated whiskey, that means you have burnt peat for drying the barley, but you can't say you have a peaty whiskey. Peat does not smell after anything, nothing. So we either have medicinal or bonfire and everything in between. So 15 to 20 ppm of smoke, a little medicinal and a little bonfire note. And in between fruitiness and, well, this maltiness or mm, Christmas cake brownie. Sweet. In the nose, very complex, but quite one-dimensional in the taste. 40%, quite low, but the smokiness typically covers the youthness of a whiskey. If a whiskey is quite smoky, then you can't distinguish if this whiskey is young or not. You have to look after, well, younger aromas in the nose, like apples, pears. Those are typically uh, distillery character flavors. And they mature to darker, more oxidized aromas later on in the maturation process. So this one is quite one-dimensional, but does not show the youngness. Even when I believe it's must be quite young. So there's the fruitiness in the nose, but it's not too apple pear. And this bitumen, no, not at all. 
not a slight idea about bitumen. There is an idea of this saltiness on my lips. Not too strong, no. The aftertaste is, well, quite short in the normal aromas and long in the peatiness. I think this Glentura peated. I feel this one is better than the sherry bottling. Whenever you have the chance, either the one or the other, I would prefer this one. But if you do not like smokiness, just keep away from this one. It's definitely smoky. Thank you for watching. There's more to come. Stay tuned and feel free to share this video with your friends.